A new twist in House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 6 suggests that Laner Valerion might have died after escaping to Essos, which could otherwise create a plot hole for the show to deal with. As Queen Rhaenyra desperately searches for riders for the unclaimed dragons at Dragonstone, it's becoming clear that everyone knows a lot less about dragons' behavior than they thought. House of the Dragon has been challenging some long-held Targaryen dragon rules, like the idea that only Targaryen dragonlords can ride dragons, and it looks like Sea Smoke is breaking another rule in Season 2. After Laner Valerion faked his death and ran away to Essos in House of the Dragon Season 1, his dragon Sea Smoke has been flying around Dragonstone and Driftmark nonstop. It's been suggested that Sea Smoke feels lonely and is missing his connection with Laner, since his Valerion rider vanished from Westeros more than 10 years ago. Spoilers ahead, so take care. At the end of House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 6, Sea Smoke picks Adam of Hull as his new rider. This choice either confirms a sad truth about Laner Valerion, creates a plot hole, or suggests that a claim about the Targaryen's dragons isn't quite right. Since Laner decided to fake his death, there's been no update on what happened to him, implying he didn't reach out to Rhaenyra after their plan worked in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 7. Unless he shows up again or sends a message to Rhaenyra, the only real hint about Laner's fate comes through his dragon, Sea Smoke. In House of the Dragon Season 2, Sea Smoke has been much more restless than in Season 1. This could be seen as the dragon reacting to Laner Valerion's death. There's no solid proof of Laner's death in House of the Dragon Season 2, but the sudden change in his dragon's behavior might be a key sign that their bond has been severed by death. George R. Martin's fire and blood novel shows that dragons can react strongly to their riders' deaths and feelings, even if they're far apart. In the season 1 finale of House of the Dragon, there are scenes where Rhaenyra and Cyrax are both shown screaming and seeming uncomfortable while Rhaenyra is in labor. This emphasizes the strong emotional and internal connection between a dragon and its rider. If Laner really died in House of the Dragon Season 2, it would make sense that Sea Smoke started to search restlessly for a new rider. The show even suggests that Sea Smoke misses his bond, meaning he's looking for a new connection after losing the old one. Sea Smoke clearly picks Adam of Hull as his new rider, and it seems very unlikely that the dragon would actively look for a new bond if there was any chance of reconnecting with his former rider. As far as the Targaryens understand, a dragon can only bond with one rider at a time. So, it would seem impossible for Sea Smoke to choose another rider unless Laner is dead. If it's true that a dragon can't bond with more than one rider at a time, then Sea Smoke choosing Adam of Hull could be seen as a plot hole in House of the Dragon. However, this isn't necessarily true. Based on what Game of Thrones has shown so far, there's never been a case of a dragon bonding with someone new while their current rider is still alive. However, this is also because no one has ever tried it before. So there's no clear evidence that a dragon can't bond with more than one rider. There aren't any documented cases of a Targaryen successfully stealing or bonding with another rider's dragon, and it's unclear if any Targaryen has ever abandoned their dragon for over a decade like Laner did with Sea Smoke. At this point if you haven't subscribed, kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos. If Sea Smoke has accepted that Laner is alive but will never return, the dragon might have decided it was time to find a new rider. Being young and likely sensing the coming war, Sea Smoke might have chosen to replace Laner with someone who would actually use their bond. Since Adam of Hull is Corlys Valerion's son and Laner's half brother, Sea Smoke might have sensed their shared blood and chosen Adam as his new rider. Unless it was specifically done to let Adam bond with Sea Smoke, House of the Dragon doesn't have a strong reason to kill off Laner Valerion. It's not even necessary to kill Laner, since the rules about bonding with multiple riders aren't clearly defined. So, there's no conclusive proof that Laner's survival creates a plot hole. Since Laner's parents already think he's dead, actually killing him off might not add any real emotional impact or guilt for Rhaenyra regarding her plan with Daemon. Additionally, Laner's story in Fire and Blood has already been concluded, and he rode away with one of the few happy endings in House of the Dragon. While Alan and Adam were claimed to be Laner Valerion's sons in Fire and Blood, House of the Dragon has completely removed that rumor and established them as Corlys bastards instead. Given how disconnected Laner is from the current storylines, there's little reason to either bring him back or kill him off. Some things are better left to audience interpretation, 
And Laner's ultimate fate after fleeing Westeros is one of those mysteries. There's no need to bring Laner Valerion back in House of the Dragon, even if it's the only way to definitively reveal whether he's alive or dead. If Laner were to return to Westeros and reveal he's alive, it would be a huge risk for Rhaenyra. It could disrupt her claim to the Iron Throne and potentially make her sons illegitimate if she's still technically married to Laner. Additionally, it would be unnecessary to show Laner alive or dying in Essos. The show's time in Essos has been very limited, and there aren't any other important characters there, aside from Laner or Carl Corey, who could realistically be used to confirm his fate. Carl could potentially return to Westeros and tell Rhaenyra about Laner's fate. But since he's a minor character, doing so might seem unjustified and unnecessary. Reyna, Aegon, and Viserys plans to escape to Pintos might lead to House of the Dragon revealing Laner's fate. But either way, there's little to gain or lose from it. Another issue left for discussion is the true parentage of Adam and Alan of Hull. In House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 6, Alan and Adam of Hull more directly address their parentage, but the show still hasn't revealed who their mother is. After being gradually introduced in Season 2, Alan and Adam are poised to play major roles in the future of the Targaryen Civil War. Much of Alan and Adam's backstory is still undisclosed in the series. The only reference to their mother so far is from Rhaenys, who told Alan that his mother must have been very beautiful. In George R. Martin's Fire and Blood book, it was claimed that Alan and Adam were the illegitimate children of Laner Valerion. However, it was heavily implied that they were actually fathered by Corlys Valerion. House of the Dragon skips over the rumors about Laner and instead reveals that Corlys fathered Alan and Adam. Corlys had hidden their parentage from his family and largely ignored them at Driftmark. Now that Seasmoke has chosen Adam as his new rider, Corlys Valerion's infidelity is likely to come to light, which will lead to a direct address of his relationship with Adam and the unseen mother of Alan and Adam. This information hasn't been revealed in the show yet, but Fire and Blood discloses that Adam and Alan's mother is Marilda of Hull, who is the captain of a cog named Mouse. Marilda is the daughter of a shipwright from Hull, and the book suggests she gave birth to her elder son when she was just 16 years old. In the book, Adam and Alan both served on their mother Marilda's ship, Mouse. However, House of the Dragon appears to have changed that, revealing instead that the brothers worked on ships captained by their father, Corlys Valerion. It now seems unlikely that Marilda of Hull will appear in the show, even though she had a role in the war in Fire and Blood. The book explained that Marilda supported Adam's claim as a Valerion bastard before he bonded with Seasmoke on Dragonstone. However, the show changes this by having Seasmoke choose Adam near Driftmark instead. Additionally, after Queen Rhaenyra's death in Fire and Blood, Marilda captains the mouse and transports King Aegon II Targaryen back to King's Landing with her son Alan. Fire and Blood mentions that Corlys would often visit the shipyards of Driftmark, which is when the rumor about his affair with Marilda started. It seems that House of the Dragon is making Marilda, Adam, and Alan older than they were in the book, but they still appear slightly younger than Laner and Rhaenyra. This suggests that Corlys and Marilda's affair likely began after the Great Council passed over Rhaenys for Queen, but before Corlys went to fight with Daemon in the Stepstones. Although Marilda is alive during the Dance of the Dragons in Martin's book, it's implied that she might be dead in House of the Dragon. For example, Rhaenys tells the secretly silver-haired Alan that his mother must have been beautiful, which could mean she was beautiful when Corlys had an affair with her or was beautiful when she was alive. Additionally, Adam and Alan have yet to be seen interacting with or discussing their mother, suggesting she might have died before the events of House of the Dragon. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and be sure to check out other videos on this channel.